How's everybody doing and welcome back to the fish room. Uh, so today I'm going to be shipping some plecos. Uh, I thought I may as well record the process, how I set everything up and kind of just stay organized. Um, I see a lot of videos on shipping fish but there's a lot of things you do that kind of help with the process, kind of speed everything along and just kind of stay organized. So I thought I'd cover that today real quick. Um, it's the morning, I'm getting ready to ship them. I have everything pretty much prepped up so I thought I'd show you guys. So let's check it out. All right, so it's a quick walkthrough. Um, right now I'm sitting down, I have all my bags in front of me. I have the names of my sellers, their address, what they ordered in the size box. Um, so I always get that written down ahead of time. I also have in the other room, all my slips already written out where it's the shipping address, my address, it'll say live fish and their address. Um, sometimes at the bottom I'll put hold and call and put their phone number. Uh, recently, I haven't been doing that much because not all the post offices really follow it. So it's easy it's just to like, contact the seller and just kind of tell them when it's going to come. Um, right here, I have a bucket of dechlorinated water at a fish room temperature. Uh, so that's around 78 degrees. My tank's around 78 degrees currently. Um, here, I have some dechlorinator. I have a towel and a, a container to scoop water. Here, I have my boxes ready to ship. And I've done other videos on shipping fish. Um, so I will tag all those at the end of this, um, but here I have a medium box. I think it's like 11 by 11 by eight and a half inches. This is like a seven by 11. I'll put those down uh, probably right here. I'll go over and check that stuff out. Um, but I have all these ready to go. I have some insulation at the bottom. This is what you can buy at like uh, Home Depot. It's a uh, insulation. It doesn't have the fiberglass, so it's not itchy on your hands. Um, you break it up, I'll put it on the bottom of the boxes once they're all set up, and then I'll lay my bags and I'll cover them over top. And then over here, especially with the plecos, the plecos are very hard to catch. Um, so if you're doing all this the morning of, you don't know if it's going to take you 10 minutes or an hour, uh, depending on how many fish, and just make sure you have the right numbers of fish. So in here I put a little flower pot, and this is all clean water. So that bucket behind me of just a chlorinated clean water, that's what I ship in. And that's why I put them in the night before. And you can see how much they went to the bathroom just overnight. Uh, Cause anytime you catch a fish, they're gonna get more stressed out. They're gonna go to the bathroom, kind of empty out their system. And also in a tank, even if you stop feeding for two days before shipping, which is what I recommend. Uh, so I ship on Mondays and here I have some adult plecos in there. So I gave them some more flower pots. And then there's another bucket over here and they're all kind of hanging out. And even now, if I had an air stone in there, that would be better. I'm kind of low on air pumps right now, so I wasn't available to do that. But this is completely fine. Uh, they're going to be in a bag without an air stone, and this is open to the air. So this is definitely a lot better than a bag. Um, you can see how much there's a bathroom in there, and I'll show you these fish as I pull them out. Um, but here's kind of an overview of the setup. Um, right now, it's the morning time. I'm already ready for the fish. I haven't done anything yet today. I did this all yesterday, just prepping. Um, just real quick, my shipping supplies, I have my bags to ship them. And I usually have tall bags, and I get these, I think, from kensfish.com. These are the six inch by 18 inch bags, maybe six, six inch by 20 inch, or six by 18. I'll put that in the description as well, because that's very important. I'm on the three inch bags, and they're way too small. There's like a four inch bag in between, which I think I'm gonna try out, I think would be nice. Um, I do eight inch wide bags by 20 for local sales, and shipping I do the six by 20. Uh, so I have that ready, I have my contact information and I know what fish go in which box just to stay organized. And then what I'll do is I'll bag the fish um, with the clean water, I'll add a few drops of the chlorinator, this is the Sea Chem Safe, uh, to kind of help bring down any ammonia that's going to build up in the bag, uh, container for scooping them out, uh, the water out, and then I'm just going to put them in these boxes here, close them up, put some insulation on top. Uh, tape them up and then slap my package on them and then like I said I already have the fish ready to go so I don't have to go through a tank here and find the plecos which could take a long time and you may lose fish in there you're kind of looking for I know I have two of a certain color um, I have more right now so it's not too too hard um, but you don't want to go to the morning up and be like wait I thought I had four red plecos to sell and I only have three uh, so get this done the night before Make sure you have the address of the seller, which is kind of common sense, but whenever you start selling fish for a while, you might just kind of collect the payment, make sure everything goes through, and then you're like, all right, I'll ship on Monday, and then Monday morning comes around, and you can't find the address, so 
do this stuff the night before. If you need to contact the seller, you can, because that's happened to me once or twice out of 50 or 100 times I've shipped fish. Uh, it's happened once or twice. You'll slip up and you forget to get that information. Because uh, you may talk to someone for weeks, not just over a day or two. So you think you have it, but you don't. So all that kind of stuff's important. And when they're in the tank here, uh, like I said, I ship on Mondays. I don't feed Saturday and Sunday before I ship. Um, there's still a lot of extra food and there's the kind of that mom on the bottom of the tank So especially the plecas they're gonna chew on that kind of stuff and keep eating so even if it's not um, Direct food from those previous days. they still have something in their system So you can see these plecas here. I've fed them for two days uh, They're still going to the bathroom even if it's wood if they're chewing on wood things like that in the aquarium um, They're still gonna give off some waste so it's good to put them in another container uh, the night before in clean water. This is not tank water. Um, tank water might be okay, especially if you just did a water change, but um, I like just to do the chlorinated water at the same temperature. It's usually been sitting for a few days in my fish room, so everything's the same temperature. Um, but let's go ahead. I'm going to bag these fish. I just wanted to do a quick video. Um, I'm running late going to the post office and things like that. So I'm not trying to take too long in this video, but I do want to stay updated. I want to keep giving you guys videos and information I think is useful. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do here, I have two bags. These are the six inch wide by 20. Um, I usually fold back the corners. It's going to be a lot easier to pour water into that. I'll do my dechlorinator first. I have a little pipette here. Um, usually I do about four drops, which is two gallons of water. It's very concentrated. Um, for the bigger fish, I might do like double that. It depends on these pluggers are bigger. So I did six drops in there. Still working on finding out the best method there. If I want to do two drops or do like 15 drops. I don't know how much is too much because to a degree you will start to deplete the oxygen. Um, but then I'm going to go ahead and get my water from my container here. And pour it in. So that's going to kind of stir up the, the chlorinator as I do that. Um, that should be enough water. These are large plecos. I always can add water, but you can't take it out, especially if you're doing like methylene blue. You don't want to fill this up too high and then have to dump it out when you've already put your chemicals in there. So now I can always add more water, but I have my first bag ready. I'm going to go ahead and grab the pleco, put them in there. And they got one long fin male and then two females, a common and an albino. And this right here really helps me when they go in the flower pots. I have my fish right inside there. I can just go ahead and dump them right in there without having to use a net, which is really nice. Uh, especially with the plecos, they can get caught. So try to make it as least stressful as possible on the fish. And this is a really nice, big male long fin pleco. Um, so definitely want to make sure he ships well. You can see you can kind of fit side to side in the bag, which is great. And I'm going to be laying these down on their side, so it's going to be very long. Uh, they'll have like. 12 inches to swim back and forth if they need to. You don't want to give them too much space. Um, I find I usually put too much water in these bags, so I'm going to try to keep cutting back on that amount. But you can see that there. All I'm going to do, you kind of got to judge the height of the bag, um, the width of the box. But go ahead and grab the bag as high as you can. If you need to let some air out, you can always do that versus trying to add air in. Um, so there you go. We got like one quarter one-fourth of water and then three-fourths of air right there. Uh, sorry, I was a little bit high of a shot. But what I've been doing is I'll pull the top of the bag as clean as I can. I'll pull it tight to kind of stretch it out, make sure it still has a good spin on it. And then I'm just going to knock the bag. I don't even mess with doing rubber bands anymore when I ship fish because I have an extra six inches there to mess with um, anyway. So it's real easy just to knock this. Uh, it's faster than rubber bands, and honestly, I think it's stronger. You don't have to worry about rubber bands breaking, and we're obviously double bagging. So go ahead, pull down pretty hard on that. Um, you can cut the tops off, but I don't find it necessary. I have it like that. All I'm going to do is tuck it to the side. I apologize for any of these camera shots, too. I'm just kind of doing this quick, uh, showing you a little bit, but mainly just talking through it. Uh, again, whenever you're putting the next bag on, I fold it back. It's going to help me go over the top. And make sure you don't get the bag too wet. Like if my hands are soaking wet and I'm spilling water, it's not going to really want to slip over this bag for me very well. Um, me just being kind of cautious, I usually nudge the pleco a little bit to get them in the other direction. Um, so they don't get sloshed around too much. But there he goes on the bottom. I flip this inside out. 
squeeze out the air from the bottom, and then you kind of grab the top tight to spin it, which is going to help those corners of the other portion of the bag get pushed in so there's not really any corners in the bag. Um, and then just repeat that same process. And I'll do this for all the bags. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to probably keep recording, then I'll cut some of this footage in and out so you're not sitting here um, with any dead space. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, knot that bag, and you're, this fish is ready to go. Um, if I turn it sideways, he's got about an inch of water. Uh, it's even going to help if I turn it again so it's on the other side. I'll let him kind of swim over. But this is going to give him a little bit more water. Uh, if the bag you see is on its side vertical, uh, it's going to give him more room. And you just want them to have enough water to be comfortable. Um, you don't want that water to get real dirty because there's not a lot of water. So that's why you're fasting the fish. Uh, so they're not, hopefully not pooping much in the bag, um, but they're going to be much more comfortable like that versus having way too much water, which will stay clean with no oxygen. So I'm going to go through, keep doing that with all these fish. I'll show you when I'm all done. I don't want to take up too much time just watching me do the same process. Uh, I might record a little bit. Sorry, I know this footage isn't great. So uh, let me just keep bagging them. I might show you some highlights in between. I'll just record it and cut out whatever I need. But um, yeah, let's show you the whole process and get this wrapped up and ship these guys. Again, I'm just going to add my prime. Uh, all that's going to do is help uh, with any of the fish waste or ammonia that does happen to get in the bag once the fish is in there. Uh, that's going to help keep the fish calm and it's going to keep the water cleaner. I'm adding my fresh water into that to kind of stir it up. And now I'm going to add my fish directly. This is the first time I've actually done this, but these flower pots work great because the pleckers are hiding in the cave. And then I can just pick up the cave, let the water drain out that bottom hole of the flower pot and drop the fish in. So that's the first time that's worked so well for me, but that's nice. And uh, probably gonna do it a lot more often now. But go ahead, grab the bag, leave enough height that you can uh, still pull and knot it. And like I said, I will kind of stretch that out. So pull it nice and tight, stretch it a little bit, give it another spin, then you're gonna knot the bag keep a towel nearby if your hands get wet so you can kind of get a better grip on things and clean up any spills I'll pull pretty tight to knot that, but you don't want to grab the actual bag. You're grabbing the knot and above. So you're stretching this part out and pulling real tight, but you don't want to be too rough on that bag. And definitely double bag all these, um, especially for plecos, because they're known for popping bags with their uh, barbs. Um, you can even triple bag if you have some thinner millimeter bags. Um, I think two is going to be plenty, especially the way I transferred these guys um, pretty smoothly. Uh, a lot of the times I think you're going to get your holes when you're first putting them in the bag. Uh, say you get a net and you have a fish that's going swimming around the whole tank going nuts and then you net them out and then you try to shake them into a bag and they're already stressed out, they're getting stuck in the net. Then when they go in the bag they're just going nuts. Um, these guys kind of went in there pretty smoothly, I just dropped them out of the flower pot into the bag. Um, didn't even have to use a net so you can see they go in there and kind of just calm down right away so that's pretty good. Uh, and a lot less likely they're going to pop the bag, even though it definitely will happen in shipping. So we're going to double bag these just to be safe. Um, I might even go back and triple bag these for especially that real big um, long fin bristle nose. That's a nice fish and an expensive fish. So an extra five cent bag around the outside um, takes me 10 seconds. It could save a whole fish's life. Um, it's worth it sometimes. Another thing that's going to be helpful once you have the fish in their bags, or in their buckets every night, um, if you want to go ahead and um, here we have a nice, uh, I kind of got a weird grip on her, uh, common female pleco. But like I was saying, to catch the fish out of the bucket, uh, especially with plecos, um, right here I have like five inches of water in that bucket. If you want to go ahead and have an empty bucket nearby, you can just dump that water out into another bucket, leave like an inch, it's a lot easier to grab your fish. It's going to stress them out a lot less and to be easier to catch them. You don't have to use a net. Um, right there I got her within 5 or 10 seconds, not even, just taking my time. Uh, so I didn't have to do that, but with the, young, with the smaller plecos I might have to do that. Probably dump a lot of the water out and then only have a little bit in the bucket so it's a lot easier to grab those guys. Another important thing guys, whenever you're shipping fish, especially if you have 
the space and all the equipment, the bags and stuff, you want to ship these guys one at a time if possible. Um, especially when it comes to plecos, um, they are harder to ship. I've had more problems shipping plecos than any other fish. My German blue rams and my guppies always do a lot better. Uh, even though I am taking a little break from my German blue rams, if you're, uh, I've gotten some emails about those asking for uh, German blue rams. Um, here we got a pleco in there. It's a nice long fin standard. Um, but I'm going with a different approach here with bagging. I'm going a lot shorter and I'm going to lay these guys sideways. Kind of almost like you would bag like a beta fish or something at a store. Um, where you'd see them like pre-bagged, things like that. Um, you're a lot better off with the flecos doing one at a time and doing smaller bags. Even smaller than you would think. I've gotten fish shipped to me in bags literally like this tiny. They'd be like those breather bags. Um, so they don't waste all the space for the air. Um, but you'd be really surprised how small of a bag you can ship some of these fish in. Um, obviously, if you have the space, bigger is better. Um, it's gonna be uh, more air, more water, so better water quality. Um, but if you're gonna put six plecos in a giant bag, if you split that bag up into six sections and did six smaller bags in the same amount of space, um, you're gonna be a lot better off because I think they run into each other, they fight in the bag, there's nowhere to hide. Um, so that's going to add to the stress, and the stress and take up more oxygen because they're more active in the bag. Um, so I think I will never ship plecos with each other again because I've had some bad experiences with that. And I've had some times where it was perfectly fine. So um, kind of me not knowing what goes on in that box while they're getting there, um, I'm not going to take the risk. So just kind of learn from my mistakes. If you're shipping plecos, do smaller bags and do every pleco in its own bag if possible, um, especially if they're adults. I would never put multiple adults in a bag. Uh, I'm not saying it can't work, but I mean, you're just kind of asking for problems. Um, so right here, see a pleco in there. I'm just doing one pleco, a few inches of water. I'm gonna put it on its side vertically so he has the most amount of water possible to sit in. And then uh, these are real tall, so I did actually cut the tops of the bags off. But for the second layer, I'll just tuck it down and then I'll put them in the box and I'll give you a above view whenever uh, I'm ready to box these up so you'll see how I bag these. Um, but if you are shipping plecos, one thing I've kind of learned and I'm still testing out different things, what's the absolute best way to do it. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best way, but it's definitely better from where I started. I used to ship um, plecos in breather bags and you can't double bag them because it's a breather bag and they would usually pop the bag and they would lose all the water. You'd, there's just so many things that I've learned over the years. Um, so this is one thing when you're shipping plecos, try to do them by themselves, um, have a lot of air in the bag, uh, just split them up the best you can and don't push it. I've done times where I've put six or eight plecos in a bag, like a six inch by 20 inch bag, decent amount of space. If I was taking them to a friend's house, not a problem at all, I do it all day long, um, but it, it'll work four out of five times at one time you'll lose six out of the eight and it's just not worth it so um, things to consider definitely try to split that up I thought I'd just chime in and say that but I'm gonna keep finishing up here and then I'm gonna show you these guys before I actually close the boxes this is my last uh, bucket of fish to bag up I thought I'd show you the actual fish because I mean who doesn't like seeing them uh, and these guys are really nice they're like two inches long uh, with their fins maybe a little bit longer uh, these are the common long fin plecos. Some of them, I swear, have like a calico to them, um, but they're not enough for me to classify it as a calico or like a red marble. Um, really cool fish though. You can kind of see them swimming around now that I took that flower pot out. So I'm gonna go through and bag these up in those mini bags like I just said. These guys are gonna take a medium box. Um, I put four of these plecos in their own bags in a small box. I'm doing six here. I'm gonna do a medium sized box. And like I said in the description below, I'm gonna post a lot of the materials I use to ship. Um, some things I, I like to go to Amazon a lot because it's kind of like an associate link. Um, but I do have bags from Ken's Fish and there's boxes I get from UPS, uh, USPS for free. So things like that I will kind of put down there some of the details if you want to go do more research yourself um, or just kind of uh, check that stuff out there and help you guys out, save some time. Um, but I thought I'd show you these fish before I bag them up because they were swimming around a bunch as they kind of go. You can see their fins. Um, that one guy there, I mean, he's kind of pushing, he, you can see he's almost fighting with the other ones, displaying really nice, but that's another big reason. If I put these all in the same bag together, 
I bet he would start a lot of problems and you'd probably lose some of these plecos, but we're not gonna do that. I'll just let you check them out before I bag them, but uh, we'll keep moving forward. All right guys, so I got all the fish bagged up. You can see here how I did the smaller bags, put them on their sides. The insulation's on the bottom, but I gotta cover them up. Uh, here's the insulation here by Home Depot. It's called green fiber. Um, reduces energy loss, whatever. Uh, you buy it in a bag, it's like 13 bucks. And it'll last you tons and tons of boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead, cover this up, show you how I tape the top, so I'm gonna get to the post office. I gotta make this kind of quick, um, but especially important whenever you're going to the post office to ship your fish, if you're doing it in the morning, which I assume you are, um, check with your post office what time they, the last trucks leave. Because um, if you get there at 12.30 or something, after the final truck, you may as well go the next day because they're gonna sit there till the next day anyways. Um, so definitely don't be late. I mean, that's why I'm kind of saying I gotta do this in a hurry. Um, videos take me longer than I thought. I don't start work till later today, so it's not like I had to get up super early, but these things take time. So give yourself plenty of time. Know what time is too late to take them to the post office. Um, but all I'm doing here is I'm just filling all the gaps. So it's gonna keep these guys at a consistent temperature, whether it's winter, I need to keep them warm or if it's summer, and I wanna keep the heat out for a while and kind of keep them insulated. Um, it kind of works like a styrofoam, but it's custom. You don't have to cut any styrofoam. You don't have to store big sheets and things like that, and it's just quick. Um, it is a little dusty if you go too quick, um, but all I'm doing is just pour it in there, push it in between the gaps and the corners. It's going to help protect the box too if it gets dropped or kind of uh, banged around. It's going to give these guys a little bit of wiggle room so they get bounced around, and the corners of the box are, box are going to be padded. Uh, not everything's going to shift around in there. Uh, the bags will kind of stay where they are. But kind of get that, just like that. Um, if I had a heat pack, what I typically would do is put it in between this stuff and then I'd cover it in paper. Uh, and then maybe do a little bit more. Uh, for the winter time, I'll use heat packs. But uh, those are the 72 hour heat packs. I'll put those in the links too. But that's pretty much it. Cover these guys up. The temperature's fine, so I'm just going to do this for insulation. And then for boxing them up. Make sure when you close the box, you have the from and to spots on these. And this is the USPS priority, um, two to three day shipping. Uh, medium boxes, I think are $20 to ship. Your cost, it's like 19 something. And then, so I'll just tape across the front and then I'll put my package slip there first. For this box here, I'll tape along the side and then for here, I'll kind of go sideways to cover this up from any rain. So I'll do that. Um, I'll kind of hide the name of the seller or the buyer. Not that I don't know if they even care, but I don't think you'll be even see it from that camera shot anyways. You can kind of see what I'm doing, but mainly just listening to me and you can see where I'm putting the tape. So this is going to go across the label and the edge of the box. So it's going to keep it waterproof. I'm walking out in the rain, walking in there. Um, they're still gonna be able to read the label and that's also gonna help keep the seal along the edge So I'll do that three times on this side and then on the side about the round of tape Make sure you have plenty of supplies um, Going into this uh, you don't want to run out halfway through a boxing fish and not have tape So I always have extras um, Then the side I'm just do one long strip and then I'll just keep repeating that process But like I said, that's gonna help keep it so you can read the label. I'll get that box out of the way. This one's kind of more centered. Um, these boxes are free from USPS. You order them online, like a 10 pack, uh, and they're free. They ship them right to your house. You get the boxes. Uh, you have to build them. They come flat, and that's real easy. You just tape the bottom in the same opposite direction. You go across and both edges, uh, and that's gonna help keep the box strong can help if it starts to leak. I'm just double checking my notes. This is the six small plecos. This is going to them in Texas. So I have, yep, so I'll match everything up. I'll also, this is something I want to mention, but I'm kind of running late, which I'll probably come back to, is for my sake of selling fish, this is good if you're a seller and you're trying to get into it, um, make sure that you record all this stuff. So you don't want to just take a payment, cash it, then ship the fish. Because then if something goes wrong, we have to refund the customer. Um, in your records or in your notes, if you're trying to figure out, all right, can I sell fish and breed them for profit and it doesn't work, how much am I making? 
if you're writing out what they pay you and then you don't record anything else, um, you're going to have no idea. You're going to collect $100 and then $20 is going to go to shipping. You don't know the cost of the fish. You may lose a few fish when you ship them and then you're like, oh, who do I even get that money from? Um, so for my records, I'll write down who it's from, what they ordered, what size their box is, because I know I'm going to take that out of my cost. And it takes time to ship stuff. Like right now I'm doing this video, it takes me a good hour or two to do all this. So I'll charge an extra 5 or $10 for shipping. I mean, I'm not hiding that from anyone. If they ask me why it costs that, I'll tell them. Um, but it takes time and then you got to kind of consider all that stuff. So to make it worth your while, or at least to break even, you got to be smart and do those kind of things. So I'm not trying to be sneaky. I'm not trying to take anyone's money, but like this box here costs like 13 or $14 to ship my cost. Um, but I also have materials. I bought the insulation. I'll use heat packs. I have my fish bags. Uh, there's a lot of costs on my end. So I charge 20 for this. So there's like $7 there that is going to help cover the cost of these things in my time. And I'm still not making money on that. It just doesn't hurt as bad. Um, but for me to charge $10 in free shipping or the exact price that you see on the box when it shows up to your house, I'm losing money. So I'm better off just selling these fish locally and not shipping them at all. Um, so that's why I do that. The larger boxes, it's 19 something. I charge $30. It's just a round number. It's easier. And it does, obviously, it's a bigger box. So I'm boxing or bagging more fish. It takes more time. So that's kind of how I justify that and make sense. But here we go. I got tape across the front, sides, over the label on all the boxes. On the sides, I put live fish and then I put this side up. I do that whenever the box is flat. Um, a lot easier to do than when there's fish in the box. So let me go ahead and run to the post office. I just take these in. Um, she rings it up. They'll ask you if they're live fish, perishable, liquids, anything like that. Uh, you'll say yes, doesn't really matter. Um, then they'll ship them out to give you a uh, tracking number. Then I'll go back to my notes here, find out what area code they're from, from their address. I will email or text them. Here's your um, tracking number. This is when it's supposed to arrive. Let me know when they arrive. So you send them all that stuff and then you want them to text you back um, whenever they arrive, send pictures if there's any problems. Then you can kind of, on your end, finish up that transaction. So I'll write, I got these fish from this person, um, this location, this date, and then I'll have a check, I have three checks. Um, when do I ship them? If I ship them today, I check it off. When did they arrive? If they arrive, I check them off or I kind of go from there if there's any things I need to fix. Um, with refunds and then from there I will record and transfer money so I have a certain account I do all my fish business in or my hobby whatever you want to call it um, nothing too crazy I mean I definitely do a lot of it but or I try to do a lot of it I'm definitely involved with my fish room but and, and you're not quitting your job on this so something like that I like to keep records of it so I'll transfer from my PayPal to my personal account or I'll refund them then transfer and then some of the money will go back into another account where my cost of expenses where my shipping was $40 from all these $60 for all these boxes today. So I'll refund myself and then that money will go to a different account. So that's just kind of how to stay organized. I'll check that last box off, kind of finish the transaction and move forward from there. So you don't get backed up and kind of get confused. Like people text you like asking questions or you forgot to ship fish or something, which doesn't really happen much at all. Um, but at least you can go back and just check yourself and say like, oh, I have no idea. I'll just do it anyways. But um, let me go ahead and do this. Maybe I'll come back and wrap this video up somehow else. But at the end of this, I'm going to put uh, a lot of videos that I've done that are going to help with previous shipping videos. Maybe I'll leave the links. Maybe I'll have them at the end. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. I got to run. Uh, I might come back and talk about this for another second. Okay, guys, just to follow up, it's about a week later from whenever I stopped the video. Um, whenever I do videos on shipping fish or anything like that where... I don't know the results until later. I won't post the video right away. Uh, so just kind of talk to you guys the whole experience. So I shipped those three boxes out. I got my tracking numbers. I contacted all of the buyers. I uh, emailed two of them and text the other because uh, whatever they want to communicate uh, anyway is fine with me. Um, but just to let you guys know, I did that. I shipped them. I recorded it. Uh, for the baby plecos, um, plecos are hard to ship. I mean, they're probably the most sensitive fish that I've ever bred and shipped. Um, so doing them individually definitely helps a lot. But just to clarify, so there's three adult plecos I shipped. Uh, I think that went to Texas. All got there great. They got them away, they're great. Uh, the baby plecos, I had a shipment of four and of six. Um, both of those boxes, they lost one pleco. 
So that's another reason I wait till I record and transfer money and stuff. So I had to refund those two people for the lost fish. Um, it's always nice if you have room in the box and you have enough fish, send one or two extras every time. And right there, I won't have to worry about it. Um, they would have got an extra fish or they would have got what they needed. I don't have to worry about refunding money. So that would have been nice if I had extras or had space to do that. Um, but also if I would have bagged those six together in one bag and that one fish died, it would probably killed half of the others, if not the whole bag, and then you're out a whole shipment. So uh, it really goes to show that it is important that you individually bag these plecos. Um, just be careful, keep trying it, be very good with customer service. Um, I always apologize. I mean, it's kind of out of my hands. I do everything I can on my end. Um, who knows if those boxes got shooken up more, uh, maybe it got a little bit hotter in the truck, maybe the weather affected them. Um, I just really don't know. There's so many variables. So just be honest with your uh, buyers, uh, have good policy where if it's dead on arrival or whatever your policy might be, that you make sure you refund them. Just be nice, answer them. Don't just take their money and don't talk to them after you ship the fish. So just letting you see the whole thing from my point of view. Um, so I showed you how I bagged them up, how I got everything ready the night before. I actually went and shipped them. Right now it's after everything's done. I had a little bit of problems with the shipment. I took care of that with the buyers and everything's kind of squared away. Um, so hopefully this video is kind of interesting to you guys. You can see how I ship fish and how I ship plecos. Um, hopefully I can tag some things here for my older videos on shipping fish. Um, some things I have changed. I've updated and probably improved on that, but you can still watch them kind of uh, see different ways you can ship fish, things like that. Uh, thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you liked it. Comment below. If not already subscribed, subscribe and hit that bell to get notified whenever I do new videos. Thanks for watching guys and have a good one.